Yo, hey, hi. We are here. It is Wednesday. I'm happy to see you. We taught a class together in person yeah, last night, awesome. and we had so the best time ever. Um, so this is an extension of record. Adrian Francis in class. Yeah. Now. The on Olympia, the, the Olympia Love Fest. It's, it is an Olympia Love Fest. Uh, apparently, Seamus and I work together, but don't communicate well about things. So it is all Olympia, all week. It is unofficial Olympia Provisions Week here at Caputo's. Let's talk more. Um, you probably saw Seamus talk about this already, but Eli is near and dear to our hearts. Uh, grew up in Sandy, half Greek, has been doing this his whole life, but perfected his artisanship and artistry in the old world and he brought that back to the states and has been making very historically intact but super dope salumi ever since and we're so proud to have him as part of our Caputo family. Where so did he study this, the meats? Um, Austria, I believe, maybe a little bit of northern Italy but he's been killing the game but he did it for almost a decade. So, wow. And it was like pure focus on like the preservation mm -hmm. of animal proteins and it is the most delicious gift that There's I think he could have given us. There's a tradition in that area of the Dolomites. There came. absolutely yeah. is, and he brought all of it back here. It is really, really hard to import any sort of coarsely ground salumi into the United States. The FDA makes you jump through all sorts of, like, hoops and do special dances. And instead, he did it here, and we get to enjoy the very best. So what you get when you get Olympia provisions is, like, antibiotic-free pork, like natural preservation and curing methods that actually relies on the true mold that should be on the outside to create this ambient environment that is full of healthy probiotics that is great for your gut but will also make you very happy. So in the spirit of that, this is their limited edition salami di Alba. Alba is a an area in Piedmont known for white truffle. So this is a salami that celebrates that. However, it's done with Oregon white truffles and salt, and it is tasty, but I mean, what I'm really excited about here is the texture. There is something about the Olympia Provisions fat. It's like a super pure and soft fat fat, but it melts like butter, and there is nothing more joyful than those bits of fat that just feel like absolute silk or velvet on your palate that will help to amplify whatever flavor it is that they're playing with, but Good God, is this perfect. It's. I'm happy to be here. It's seriously a, a wonderful piece of meat. And I love that you focused on the buttery, silky quality of the fat because I myself have a great fondness for a woman named Julie Clifford in Provo who has mangalitsa pigs. And if you've ever cooked mangalitsa bacon, it makes the silkiest, silkiest fat in the pan on earth. And you want to soak things in it, but it feels just like really beautiful oil. That's what that feels like. That reminded me a lot of Mangalitsa pig, which if you didn't know what those are, they are considered the Kobe beef of pigs, and they are extraordinary. Uh, this stuff has a delicate truffly perfume to it, and it's got that incredible high quality fat that just sort of makes it feel like somebody kissed you with really beautiful oil on their lips. I mean, that sort of thing. But the perfume of the truffles is what got me, and the coat and quality of the fat all over the palate is what got me. And so naturally, I started feeling a wee bit kinky, and that's why I decided to go with Chateau Moussard from Lebanon. Um, one of my favorite people in the universe turned me on to this wine. His name is Ali Sabah from uh, Maza. And if you haven't eaten Maza, you really should. He's done more for Lebanese food, the spirit of generosity and community in, 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 the, in the city. And more for this, you know, turning people on to Lebanese wine than anybody I know. And he's one of the loveliest humans ever. But long story short, the first time I had this, I hated it. I poured it out in a glass for a couple hours and it was god awful. It smelled like somebody had set a dumpster on, on fire and then dumped it on a barnyard pile of mulch. It was horrible. But brother and I were being the being the being the being the uh, uh, practice drinkers that we are, let it sit for a couple hours and came back to it later and it bloomed. It was gorgeous. It was spectacular. Uh, it's an estate founded by uh, Gaston Hochar, or Serge Hochar, I can't keep, the, keep them straight, Hochar family, 1930, leaves southern France, goes to Lebanon, and they start making things that sort of blend the best of both worlds, um, high altitude vineyards that it takes them during battle up to, up to two, two, two weeks to get fruit from vineyard to, to winery but it's only about a 20 minute, you know, 20 mile drive. That's it. So you have to remember Lebanon, war torn, all sorts of crazy stuff. They've only missed two vintages because of war. And when you see photos from their historical archives, you see, you know, artillery shell craters. These guys really worked their arses off to make incredible wine. Biodynamically farmed, 
uh, made in the most hands-off, transparent way possible. It's a blend of Cabernet, Sanso, and Carignan. Odd blend of stuff. So it's sort of like Bordeaux. The Rhone River Valley had a, had a baby, and it came out really beautifully like this. They they start it in cement, move it to oak, and then move it back to cement before bottling, and then they sit on it for seven years. So what you're seeing here is the current vintage, which is 2013. So if you want to see the effects of age on wine, you can get a perfectly matured bottle of wine on the shelf now. Almost 10 years old, and it's drinking spectacularly. And the acid and the tannic structure in this wine is really silky. It drinks like something very expensive and very French. And it complemented the truffle and meat and fat in this perfectly. It is one of my personal sentimental favorite wines. It is one of those wines that makes me not want to talk about wine, which is how I know I like it, if that makes any sense. I don't know it don't make sense very often, but... That makes perfect sense. Drink the Musar and go visit Ali at Maza. Go to Maza. Eat some salami. Anyway. Have a nice week. That's about it. Have a lovely week. That's it for me. Uh, we'll see you on the flip side, but until then, keep your masks on, eat a lot of salami, be nice to each other, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.